It was a strong anti-government message that helped Rand Paul ride the Tea Party wave to victory in the Kentucky Republican Senate primary. Watch out, here we come. But now one of Paul's more unusual views is getting him into hot water. His past criticism of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which he has said went too far by banning discrimination by private companies. How about desegregating, desegregating lunch counters? Fountains. Lunch counters? Then if you decide that restaurants are publicly owned and not privately owned, then do you say that you should have the right to bring your gun into a restaurant even though the, the owner of the restaurant says, well, no, we don't want to have guns in here. Paul's comments drew a sharp rebuke from the White House. In a discussion about uh, whether or not you support those, um, I don't think has a, a real shouldn't have a place in our political dialogue in, in, uh, in 2010. The controversy has revived suggestions by Tea Party critics that there are racists in the movement, an allegation Paul says is dead wrong. He says he abhors racial discrimination, okay. but he doesn't believe the government has a right to tell a private business who they have to serve. But now Paul is clarifying his views, saying that whatever his concerns may have been about parts of the Civil Rights Act, he is not and has never called for repealing it. For Good Morning America, Jonathan Carl, ABC News, Washington. And Senate candidate Dr. Rand Paul joins us now. Thank you for joining us again, uh, Dr. Paul. And let's get right to it. Okay, it's on the Civil Rights Act, you say now, I wouldn't repeal it, I would have voted for it, I'm against discrimination. But it comes against the background of similar views you've expressed in the past. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fair Housing Act, which prohibits discrimination in, in selling or renting of houses. You wrote to your local paper that uh, the... Fair Housing Act doesn't recognize the distinction between private and public property. Should discrimination be prohibited for public taxpayer finance institutions, such as schools, to reject someone based on an individual's beliefs or attributes? Most certainly. Should it be prohibited for private entities, such as a church, a bed and breakfast, or a retirement neighborhood that doesn't want noisy children? Absolutely not. And then you went on to write that said, a free society will abide unofficial private discrimination even when that means allowing hate-filled groups to exclude people based on the color of their skin. So you believe if someone doesn't want to sell their house to someone else based on the color of their skin, that's okay? Good morning, George. Good morning, Robin. Uh, when does my honeymoon period start? I had a big victory. I thought I got a honeymoon period from you guys in the media. Uh, well, you know, we're just asking the questions that come up in the context of this campaign, and <laughs> and and so it, it, well, they they really they come up in the context of the Democrat talking points. For example, I've been trashed up and down one network that sends to side with the Democrats for an entire 24 hours. I've suffered from them saying, "Oh, he wants to repeal the Civil Rights Act." But that's never been my position. So really, this is a lot about politics. This is about, you know, look, we're up 20 points in Kentucky. Democrats are going to have a tough time winning down well, here. Well, so they're going to make up a lot of well, stuff. Sir, with respect, and go I, forward with that. I just showed your own words up on the screen. I'm just asking if you still believe them. All right. What I say is that I am against repealing the Civil Rights Act. I'm against repealing the Fair Housing Act. I've never campaigned on that. It's not part of our platform. And so what these are are red herrings that people are trying to bring up because the Democrats are way behind in Kentucky and are going to have a tough time beating us down here. You know, I mean, if you want to bring up 40-year-old legislation, why don't you bring me on with Senator Byrd, and we'll talk about how he filibustered the Civil Rights Act. You know, make him, call him to task for what something he actually did, as opposed to calling me to task for something that they insinuate yes, that sir, I might believe that is me, not true. Excuse me, I haven't true. insinuated anything. I'm reading from a May 30th, 2002 letter you wrote to your local newspaper, the Bowling Green Daily News, where you said... Right, and you, I even just if answered you, don't, you George... Yeah, but I just answered you, George, and said I don't believe in repealing the Fair Housing Act. So the thing is, is what is going on here is an attempt to vilify us for partisan reasons. Where do your talking points come from? The Democrat National Committee. They also come from Rachel Maddow and MSNBC. You know, I've just been trashed up and down, and they have been saying things that are untrue. And when they say I'm for repealing the Civil Rights Act, it's absolutely false never been my position and something that I think is basically just politics. Sir, I, I haven't said that and I'm reading from the Bowling Green Daily News but let's move on because you also said something. I know and I've answered you. I've answered okay, you that I'm that's not why I want to move on. Fair Housing uh, okay, Act. Got it. 
Fox Business Network on January 22nd, 2010. You talk about government regulations and what you think should happen with government regulations. Take a look. Get rid of regulations, get the EPA out of our coal business down here, get OSHA out of our small businesses. We need to restrain government to let small businesses and businessmen and women create jobs. So I want to see how far you would push that belief. You know, the front page of USA Today this morning, we've been talking about it. EPA, EPA tells BP to use less toxic chemicals. Do you believe the EPA should not be allowed to tell oil companies they can't use certain chemicals to enforce safety regulations on that rig out there? No. What I was referring to with the EPA is I find it particularly galling that the EPA puts out a press release and says that if Congress doesn't do anything about greenhouse emissions, that they will. I think that's a regulatory commission run amok, and I think we need to have congressional oversight. I don't think regulatory agencies should write regulations without approval of the people through their representatives. And I stick to that, and that's absolutely my point of view. But you don't want to get rid of the EPA? No, the thing is, is that, you know, the drilling right now and the problem we're having now is in international waters. And I think there needs to be regulation of that and always has been. I think there are hundreds of pages of regulation. What I don't like from the president's administration is this sort of, you know, I'll put my boot heel on the throat of BP. I think that sounds really un-American in his criticism of business. I've heard nothing from BP about not paying for the spill. And I think it's part of this sort of blame game society in the sense that it's always got to be someone's fault and instead of the fact that maybe sometimes accidents happen. I mean, we had a mining accident that was very tragic, and I've met a lot of these miners and their families. They're very brave people to do a dangerous job, but then we come in and it's always someone's fault. Maybe sometimes accidents happen. So, so you, you believe that the, the, the regulation of BP was adequate? I don't know exactly what the regulation of BP is. I think there's hundreds of pages of regulation of drilling in the ocean, and I think most of that's justified. I think we'll have to figure out from this accident, is there anything that could have been done to prevent it? Should, what can we do in the future to make sure that it doesn't happen again? So I think we use logic, we use objective facts, and we, yeah, we try to go forward, and nobody wants this to happen. I, I love the beautiful beaches down in the panhandle of Florida, and nobody wants to see oil washing up on those white sand beaches. Should the federal government be able to set a minimum wage? Repeat that one more time. Should we have the, a little bit of an echo. Should the federal government be able to set a minimum wage? Well, it's not a question of whether they can or cannot. I think that's decided. I think the question you have to ask is whether or not when you set the minimum wage, it may cause unemployment. You know, those who are at the lowest wages, if you raise the wage to a certain rate, if it's above what the employer deems that their labor is worth, they won't get hired. So the least skilled people in our society have trouble getting jobs the higher you make the minimum wage. And it's one of those things where you see on the surface, you say, oh, all these workers at McDonald's got raised 50 cents an hour, but what you don't see is there were 21 workers and now there's 15 workers if you raise the minimum wage too high. You know, if it were a good idea to raise the minimum wage and it worked, why don't we raise it to $20 an hour or $30 an hour? Obviously, there is a point where you get to that you cause unemployment. And I'm not sure the government's always really the smartest in the world as far as economic decisions. But you wouldn't repeal it? Repeal the minimum wage. And I think the vote comes up a lot of times on whether to raise it or not. And I think that what you have to ask yourself is, do you create unemployment by raising the minimum wage too high? But I think it's a good example of how people with good intentions, you know, many Democrats, they say, oh, we'll help people. We want to do this. And they have good intentions. And I take them at their word that they want to do what's best for people. But what happens is they don't think through the ultimate consequences of it. It's sort of like all of the things we're doing by having such a massive debt in our country. They're doing it with good intentions. But what's happening now is that we are in danger as a country of going the way of Greece if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. Moody's has talked about knocking our AAA rating down to AA. So, I mean, we really have to watch what's going on and begin to reform our spending or we're in a really world of hurt. Okay, as a well, thank, thank you very much for giving your side of the story this morning. Thank you, George.